Hello and welcome to our worship on Sunday the 5th of July. I can't believe it's July already, um, but I hope you enjoy today's service. So we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to consider how we have been this week with other people and how we have been with God. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please repeat after me. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Reading is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots of Ephraim and war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. 
his rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. A reading from Romans chapter 7. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who does it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. And this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance, we wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder how many of you on hearing today's Gospel reading were taken back to your childhood, sitting in church and hearing the priest say, Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. What comfortable words. I always used to think that this meant that they were cosy words, like a comfort blanket. But the term used here is from the Latin confortare, which means to strengthen. So, A more modern way of putting it would be, hear what strengthening words our Saviour Christ says. I quite like the idea of both. That it is both a comforting saying of Jesus and that it strengthens my faith. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. That's a message I needed to hear this week. And maybe you too. We are weary Weary of this virus, weary of the changes to the rules, weary of the ever-increasing numbers of deaths and infections, and we're carrying the burden of worry for our loved ones and our future. 
into our context to every single one of us Jesus says come to me come to me I'm just going to play you a little clip from Bishop Michael Curry who's the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in the United States and he puts it in such a beautiful way these words of Jesus Jesus says come unto me all you who are weary heavy laden sometimes beaten down by the realities of life sometimes struggling to just make it sometimes trying to see a vision that's greater than what you see normally in life come unto me all ye all y'all come unto me so these words are for each one of us all together Jesus is speaking as a rabbi, a Jewish teacher, and in the context of a world where Jewish people would follow the teachings of a particular rabbi and their particular interpretation of the law, the Torah. Some of these interpretations were very difficult to follow. and Jesus chastises some of them for tithing, that is offering 10% to God, of their herbs and spices, but ignoring poor people in their midst. Their interpretation of the yoke of Torah is a burden too heavy to carry, especially for the poor. And so Jesus says, if this teaching of the Torah is too heavy for you, come to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Of course, Jesus, as he is teaching, he often uses images that everyone are familiar with. And people would have been familiar with the image of a yoke on oxen pulling a plough a piece of wood that goes over the neck of the ox and the teaching of the Torah was sometimes described as a yoke. I once heard a priest point out in a sermon which has always stayed with me that when we hear Jesus use this image of a yoke we need to remember that Jesus was a carpenter. He would have made yokes for local farmers perhaps even for people to wear for carrying pails of water over their shoulders At the time of Jesus, of course, there was no mass production. Everything was made to measure. Each one of the yokes Jesus would have made would have been made to measure, to fit the animal or person to enable them to do their work and thrive. This is why Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light, because he has made it for each one of us to fit perfectly. We can use the image of the yoke as being an image of our calling, I've been reminded of calling this week as it is Peter tide, the time when ordinations traditionally take place. And of course, we're thinking about Malcolm today, who will be licensed to the parish of Bremington. We heard something of Malcolm's story of his calling last week. When we are doing the work God has called us to do, Jesus' yoke really is easy and his burden is light. It is a yoke that enables us to work well and thrive. My nephew recently started a new job working for Amazon. He's in a big warehouse and is on his feet all day. And he was given a special pair of steel toe cap boots that he has to wear. And he told me they were really uncomfortable. So being a very nice auntie, I bought him some gel insoles for his boots. And he texted me the other day to say that his feet are feeling so much better and that he's barely noticing the boots now at work. He needed to be wearing the right kind of kit to thrive at work. It is easy for us, I think, to think that God is calling us to work that is difficult, that God's calling should be really hard. But that's not what Jesus says. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we are truly following God's call, we thrive doesn't mean that we don't have difficult days and times when we want to give up. But if we are where God wants us to be, we really will thrive. Have you been wearing the wrong yoke? A yoke of expectations that God has never placed on your shoulders. Let's hear those comfortable words again. Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is, seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers today, we're going to concentrate on our breathing. We breathe in and breathe out. And as we breathe in, we think of all those things on our minds. And as we breathe out, we release those things into God's hands. So we breathe in and breathe out. Continue to do these long, slow breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. So first we think about the church around the world. Especially those churches preparing to reopen. We pray for wisdom. Breathing in and breathing out. We pray for the governments of the world, all scientists working on a vaccine. We pray for collaboration and reconciliation between nations. and that good would come of this shared experience of the pandemic. Breathing in and breathing out. Now we think of those known to us who are sick or in need, praying especially for the Reverend David Hull and his wife Chris. As, they, as, as David receives treatment for his cancer, praying that they would know God's presence with them through this difficult time. We also pray for John Wybrow and others known to us. We breathe in and we breathe out. We pray that the Holy Spirit would fill us. And so with each bidding, we breathe in and we breathe out. Lord God, fill me with your Spirit. I receive your love and release my insecurity. I receive your joy and release my unhappiness. I receive your peace and release my anxiety. 
I receive your patience and release my impulsiveness. I receive your kindness and release my indifference. I receive your goodness and release my ungodliness. I receive your faithfulness and release my disloyalty. I receive your gentleness and release my severity. I receive your self-control and release my self-indulgence. Lord God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture, you may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus. Dwell in me, and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself. Let us pray. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. <laughs>
So let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. May God give you grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you for worshipping with us this week. We will continue in this vein until we reopen the churches towards the end of the month. Um, please look on our church website for updates on what's happening in terms of reopening for worship in our buildings. Otherwise, we will continue with our usual pattern of worship Tuesdays at seven o'clock on Facebook for a Eucharist and Thursday mornings for phone church and then Sundays on, here on YouTube. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable. And caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. 